Welcome back. If we leave the house, then we're wearing masks to work, to school, uh, to, to the grocery store, for example, which of course means uh, that a lot of people are seeing skin issues happen underneath that mask on their face. So this morning, we're chatting with dermatologist Dr. Michelle Heary with OC Skin Lab. She joins us this morning to talk about some of these issues. Uh, Dr. Heary, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Good to see you uh, again. And for sharing some of your wisdom with us this morning. So we're talking about mask knee. Can we talk specifically about some of the issues we're seeing and maybe some that you've seen underneath masks? Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of the times the mask knee is not necessarily acne related, although it can be, but it's important to realize that there are other conditions that can cause those acne type lesions underneath the mask. And so it's really important to see someone who can appropriately diagnose that and get you on the right treatment. There's something called perioral dermatitis. Masks can also make people with rosacea break out with acne lesions, but the underlying issue is rosacea necessarily. And then of course there's acne. People who have acne will get worsening acne. And it's really a function mm. of what's going on underneath the mask, the heat, the humidity, the friction, all leading to this breakout. And then of course, people put things on their face that could make them break out more like makeup. So it's something you definitely don't want to put on underneath the mask. So something that we've seen and heard about in our community at least, and I did a little bit of research this morning, was this idea of, of and the possibility of getting a staph infection or MRSA on your face underneath that mask. Um, is that a possibility or is it very rare to see something like that? So I think it's important to understand what causes MRSA on the face. So there are some people who are colonized with methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, and they may get MRSA infections anywhere. And of course, they're going to get okay. more of an of a in infection underneath a mask that's constantly being, say, irritated, traumatized, or if they have an open wound. This especially is important in hospital workers who are wearing, say, like the N95s that are constantly breaking down their skin in yes. certain areas. And then they're not able to repair that barrier. And then they may get MRSA infections if they're prone to them. But it's not like it's going to cause a MRSA infection unless you actually already have that bacteria on your skin anyway. So it's a little bit of a myth okay. out there. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you for, for clearing that up. And also, I think a lot of us are sending our kids to school now here in Arizona, we're starting to open up our schools and our kids have to wear these masks all day long um, in every class. Are there things that we can do with our kids to maybe have them wash their face morning and night, even though maybe it's something not necessarily that they've always done to, yeah. uh, to care yeah. for their skin these days? Yes, you have to be a little bit more vigilant now. First of all, have several masks so that you can always have a new one every day and wash it with fragrance-free detergent and no dryer sheets. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to wash your face twice a day, morning and night, with a very gentle, fragrance-free cleanser. Keep your skin very well cleansed, but not stripped. And I think that's a very important thing to understand. You don't wanna break your skin barrier down in any way. So just a very gentle cleanser, a gentle moisturizer. I mean, kids don't need to wear makeup, but if you're older, you don't need to wear makeup and nothing really on the lips if you can, if you can um, do that because Anything you put on the lips will then get around your mouth as well. Um, and then constantly oh, change that. Yeah, constantly change that mask every day and make sure you're wearing a mask that's potentially more of like a cotton fabric. So polyester fabrics just don't breathe as well. And then you're going to have more of an issue with sweat and irritation. Okay, speaking of that, I do have to ask you, because I know we're gonna have to wrap up real quick, but you've seen those uh, like stretchy fabric. They say that some of them are like swimsuit fabric that people mm -hmm. use to work out. What are your thoughts on that? Do they, are they, do they pull the sweat out or do they hold it or are they better or worse yeah. for your face? They're actually, they're actually worse and, and they don't protect as well. So there was a study that did come out saying which fabrics were better, you know, the tighter weave cotton fabrics were actually a bit better than more of the swimsuit material. And that material is really not great to be right against your skin. It just doesn't allow that sweat to be absorbed at all. So if you do have one of those, make sure it has a liner on the inside that's more of a cotton fabric. Okay, good to know. Dr. Heary, what's your uh, website or if people have any questions, they wanna get a hold of you, how would they do that? 
Oh yeah. So OCSkinLab.com. Yeah. Come, it's so come, good and, to see you. come and say hi. Thank you for your time yeah. this morning. You got it. You we got will. it. <laughs> it's good to see you. Thank you. You look great. Thank you so much. Nice Thanks, to see you, you as well. Troy, okay, so um, Dr. Hure says don't, you know, they don't protect as well those workout masks that are made of uh, like swimsuit material and such. Yeah, I and feel like uh, it, cotton is, you know, that natural fabric is always the best. It always feels best against my skin, right? And uh, I tell you what, for those of you out there who have to wear a mask all day long at work, bless you. I don't know how you do it. I have mine on for 20 minutes and uh, no fun. All right, uh, Cosmo.